Hello and welcome everyone to Amigos 21st Century IAS Hyderabad. In this segment, we'll be discussing today's prelims questions from Environment and Ecology section. But before I proceed with this particular explanation, I have to tell you that because Environment and Ecology is interdisciplinary subject, so it may overlap with Geography, Science Tech and Biotechnology. So let us start with the first question. Consider the following trees, Jackfruit, Mahua and Teak. They are asking which are these deciduous trees. So geography environment question it is. So factual question, jackfruit is actually evergreen tree. So eliminate this, mahua and teak are deciduous trees. So the answer is 2 and 3 but because this year they have asked 70 to 80 percent questions on only 1, only 2. So there, has, there is not much chance for elimination techniques here. So let us go with 2 are the right options here, only 2 is the right answer. So you can see here answer is B because first one is evergreen tree but not deciduous tree. Explanation is there here. You can pause any time for explanation on the video and check it. I want to be quick and in brief because I understand aspirants would want to know the answers and a brief explanation as well. So I am going to keep my explanation very short. If you have any questions you can post in the comment box, I will be happy to reply. So second question is regarding marsupials. Oh, I forgot to tell you this is from set A and I have also maintained the numbers also from the current set. So set, set A questions I am discussing in this current segment, numbers also correspond to the set A, fine. So marsupials are pouched animals as example kangaroo, wallabies. So that is not naturally found in India, this option is right. Statement 2, marsupials can thrive only in mountain grasslands with no predators, seriously? No, definitely every animal has some predators. Kangaroos also have predators like wild dogs are there, sometimes humans also are there and they are mostly present in Americas, Australia and we call this as uh, in Indonesia islands also. That means they are not found in India, that is correct option. Only grasslands, no, they can be staying in deserts, their habitat, scrublands are there, evergreen forests also are there. So they can be staying in so many different types of habitats. They are saying only mountain grasslands, no, so the option statement 2 is wrong. So what is the correct answer here? 1 is correct and 2 is incorrect means answer C should be right here. Yes, as you can see here, all current existing marsupials are endemic to Australasia. Valesia means Indonesia islands and the Americas and habitats are tropical rainforests, deserts, dry scrublands. Hope this explanation suffices. Next one, invasive species database who will prepare? IUCN. IUCN makes a red data list where they give the conservation status of various species. In the same way, invasive species are very dangerous for the ecosystems. They will try to eliminate the endemic species. So the database of this invasive species actually is made by IUCN, International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Maybe the option got somewhat, uh, uh, maybe it was not typed properly. It is IUCN, fine. That is the answer here. And uh, next one. Lion tail, macaque, malabar civet, cat, okay, sambar deer, which of the following are generally nocturnal or most active after sunset? We have a word for that. For example, if some species, they are active only after the night, nocturnal species. Diurnal means active during the day. And there is another word called as crepuscular. Crepuscular. Crepuscular means they are active during the dawn and dusk when the light is very less. That means they don't like the sunlight to be there out in the open, does not mean never they will be found there. For example, lion tail macaque stays endemic to western ghats. You can see that on the top of the tree canopies also, endangered species it is. As per IUCN, Malabar civet, forget about light, you cannot see it. It is so elusive species, very shy, hardly you can see Malabar civet. Of course, it is nocturnal, it is critically endangered also. Sambar deer is vulnerable and state animal of Odisha. Sambar deer you can sometimes see in the day at some places but the point is they are most active after the sunset time. That means answer should be 2 and 3 but because they will not give 2 and 3 what is the answer here? Two options are correct means here B is the right answer. Okay and next segment which of the following organisms perform waggle dance to tell their you know kin to talk about the direction and distance of source of food. Very interesting question have to always observe nature, animals and birds, see so many questions are there in the exam because of course Indian Forest Service exam prelims also is linked with the remaining uh, civil services posts. 
that's why many questions come from the environment but again it is a very important topic for any competitive exam so usually honeybees will do this exercise near their hives or sometimes near the flowers you know they will be doing some kind of waggling dance and they will try to show uh, the direction of the food by keeping the angle of their dance aligning with the movement of the sun or direction of the sun that is very interesting you can observe any time you go near the flowers in any gardens so honeybees perform this dance c is the right answer and mushrooms question many such questions came in the exam one good thing is ilanti questions lanti in this kind of questions aise questions mein kya hota hai almost all are correct usually so you can take little bit risk in this kind of questions you will be seeing more and more questions like this where the answers are all correct fine common sense has to be used some mushrooms have medicinal properties yeah mushrooms are fungi some of them have medicinal properties some of them are psychoactive properties halos hallucination psychotropic substances sometimes some mushrooms will be taking you on some kind of a trip if you watch the film midsummer you can find this you know direct application of this particular mushrooms if you eat them you will go into some kind of hallucination yes it is there some mushrooms have insecticidal properties yes they can be used as natural bio pesticides it's right they have bioluminescent properties some of the mushrooms there are so many varieties of mushrooms some of them can be you know bioluminescent means naturally they emit light they will glow in the dark yes all options are right explanation provided with the names of the fungi or the mushrooms what are there for example you can see here some of the fungi can have metabolites and through biotechnology you can use them for the medicines what about psychoactive properties there is one here psilocybin okay it will show psychotropic reactions and then bio pesticides means here myco pesticide is a pesticide you can use from the fungi or the mushrooms it is very helpful okay and bioluminescent also is there so you can see pandanus stipticus okay that is the names of the mushrooms which are exhibiting these properties all are correct so answer is d there and next question indian squirrels now this is somewhat controversial question because indian squirrel means what there are around 40 plus species of squirrels in india indian squirrel means is it the normal indian palm squirrels what we see near our houses or indian ground squirrels or malabar squirrel so upsc has not specified that so depending on what upsc thinks of indian squirrels the answer could change for example they build nests by making burrows in the ground ground squirrels will do that indian palm squirrels will not make nests in the ground you can see them on the coconut trees right on many other trees they will be actually having this tree cavities or the branches of the tree there they will make the nests so we can eliminate the option number 1 here if i talk about only indian palm squirrels they store their food materials like nuts and seeds in the ground if you google and you will see of course all the options are correct but which squirrel we has upsc is trying to consider we have to see that indian squirrel means indian palm squirrel we can think of because indian palm squirrel sometimes called as indian squirrel no it will not store the food materials like that you can see in harsher winter countries like australia canada because there the winter is so harsh there is no food availability they the squirrels will be actually storing those you know seeds or nuts whatever during the tough season to help them but in india we don't see that they of course they eat the nuts and the seeds and they will be coming on the ground what about the upper reaches of himalayas there also the squirrels will be coming to the lower reaches in the harsh times but very less evidence regarding the option number 2 for the indian palm squirrel so two also i will consider as wrong they are omnivorous yes not only nuts and seeds they will be eating insects rodents what not they have a very good diet so the answer should be only one is correct so i chose as one but if upsc wants to consider generally they may choose maybe b so either a or b should be the right answer b in the sense maybe this nuts and seeds they may consider or nest making but in my opinion if i see as you know also as a person who has who does this who is a wildlife enthusiast and uh, you know i work in this field so i would technically say a is the perfect answer but again upsc has its own mind so i could give b also so please have caution here with respect to the question microorganisms full adaptable anywhere common sense logic question is there they will grow in environments with temperature above the boiling point of water they will stay everywhere in any condition logic common sense so answer should be like everything yes it is true they will grow in environments with temperatures below the freezing point below freezing point above boiling point any kind of acidic environment c ph below 3 they will survive any places microorganisms fine so answer is all three are correct fine 
and added explanation also giving the names of these particular microorganisms surviving at higher temperatures for example you can see here uh, pyrodictium 110 celsius and also one more here permafrost bacteria at minus 10 degrees celsius and also crypto endolithic microbacterial uh, community also there around minus 5 to minus 10 below freezing point also and what about the ph less than uh, no acidic that means less than 5 are called acidophiles they love the acidic environment so you can see sulfolobus species microorganism will survive at ph values of 2.5 to 3.5 explanation fine so all are correct again so again common sense helps us get in the answer here as you can see the photograph there very interesting question orangutan has very interesting skeleton which resembles almost like ours very intelligent species fine uh, very much in news always regarding the palm oil exploitation in the indonesia sumatra java islands and palm oil exploitation means their forests their rainforests are completely gone exploited and in environmental concerns are there but very highly intelligent species they are the answer because here question is asking like this which of the following makes a tool with a stick to scrape the insects from a hole in a tree or a log of wood see here the application the particular stick is there after the tree branch is there inside the termite mound it is sticking inside to get the ants or termites sometimes grasshoppers anything they can use fine so very interesting species here orangutan is the answer here b which is very intelligent it will make use of this kind of tools tool making is not limited to humans even animals are perfect at that including the house crow or any kind of crow they are very intelligent species but the answer is not fishing cat not otter not sloth bear it's orangutan sloth bear will be directly attacking the termite mounds with its claws fine and uh, which of the following you know are in the making hydrofluorocarbons are used hydrofluorocarbons application is the question here hydrofluorocarbons as hydrogen fluoride fluorine and chlorine so they are very essential in making all of this aerosols foam agents fire retardants lubricants in this kind of questions common sense is required how to eliminate these things almost applications of the modern day you know chemicals are there for anything so you can use your common sense and take the right answer here answer should be all four hydrofluorocarbons are used to make all these things okay carbon markets very budding topic because greenhouse gas emissions we want to reduce any companies who are using fossil fuels we have to disincentivize them in using fossil fuels so we have to put some taxes on them so carbon markets will be coming into the picture when you put some kind of carbon tax on the companies who are using fossil fuels for their production carbon intensive products so what happens here is there are important widespread tools in the fight against climate change yes for reducing greenhouse gas emissions statement 2 is carbon markets transfer resources from private sector to the state yes they do because private sector owns the resources now the state is able to interfere into that and state is able to put some kind of taxation to those companies that is the explanation of this this particular statements has been taken from i think economist article that is what i have found in my research fine so explanation doesn't match however they are essential for fighting climate change but there's not talking about resources in the first statement i cannot link first statement explanation with second explanation so i can say both of them okay are right but the explanations doesn't match so the answer should be both statement 1 and 2 are correct but statement 2 is not the explanation for statement 1 fine so private sector can fight against climate change state can also fight against climate change that does not directly correspond to the statement 1 so i will go with option b here and next to question central government when it notifies an area as community reserve what is going to happen generally state governments notify an area as community reserve uh, when any village councils they are saving their forests by consulting with them what happens is the state government usually notifies that particular area as a community reserve so in india we have as per wildlife protection act 1972 protected areas are there national parks wildlife sanctuaries conservation reserves community reserves so conservation community reserves came as per the 2002 amendment to the act so as per community reserve what are the restrictions here once an area is notified as community reserve it comes under the control of the chief wildlife warden means forest department that is option one is uh, true hunting is not allowed in the area obviously protected area hunting is not allowed but 
3 and 4 are somewhat difficult to understand. In general, if I saw down to earth.org.in, in that they mentioned that of course they are not able to do even in Nagaland, for example, community reserve has been declared, they are not able to do even the traditional shifting cultivation, zoom cultivation. So, 4 is also wrong because are allowed, no, they are not allowed. First one is, of course, Chief Wildlife Warden becomes in charge, Forest Department. Hunting is not allowed also is true. We got two right options here, one wrong. Now, three, whether it is right or wrong is, I am also not quite sure about because in general, they cannot collect even non-timber forest produce, but in some areas, they are collecting. So, the answer sounds somewhat different. Now, should I go with answer only two are correct because they are not allowed to collect even you know, timber, non-timber forest produce, no agriculture, no shifting agriculture, nothing like that. But some, uh, you know, there is not much evidence to uh, take the option 3 as uh, as wrong. So, I will be going with B here or the answer could be uh, 3 also. It means B or C could be the right answer. So, let us uh, wait for the final key which of course comes next year and let us, uh, because we cannot take a one single stand here or if I find any information later on this, I will be posting again in the comment section. Okay, So, B or C could be the right answer here. There are at least 2-3 questions like that, fine. Now, what about carbon fibers, very strong, resilient, lightweight materials, their applications are very high. So, it can be used in automobiles, our aircrafts, common sense point has to be ticked as right. Carbon fibers cannot be recycled. These days, almost everything is recycled. So, we can tick the option 2 as wrong by common sense also. So, answer is finally, one only statements have come here. Okay, That is the answer. They can be used to make see, so many things, bicycle frames, golf club shafts, sailboat masts and what not. Recycle can be done by using advanced technologies. Biofilters. Biofilters are used to remove pollutants. So, biofilters in waste treatment, what the question is there? Role of biofilters in recirculating aquaculture system where you are producing fishes. So, of course, in aquaculture, so many fishes are there, they will excrete ammonia, ammonia comes out. How to treat the waste water is the question now. So, biofiltration is a technology which is used to remove that pollutants. Fine. So, it provides wastewater treatment by removing uneaten fish feed. Yes, it converts ammonia present in fish waste into nitrate. Yes, and biofilters increase phosphorus as nutrient for fish in water. Yes, they use nitrifying bacteria. So, that means biofilters will create a layer, okay, because fish will produce ammonia as per their wastes. Now, how to treat ammonia? Biofiltration is used to treat ammonia. Nitrifying bacteria will be coming. Ammonia is converted to nitrite, which is not helpful for fish. Again, some other nitrifying bacteria will convert nitrite to nitrate. So, option 2 also is correct. And they also increase the availability of phosphorus, which is helpful for fish in their, you know, building their exoskeletons and as mineral for them. So, options 1, 2, 3, all are correct. Again, common sense point prevails. Fine. So, next one here. Mercury pollution, mercury, very toxic, highly toxic chemical it is. We cannot uh, have any kind of remedy against mercury once you are exposed for a long span of time. So, gold mining is one of the most important human induced source of making this mercury. So, pollution in the world, option 1 is correct. Coal based thermal power plants also as a byproduct, you know, they cause mercury pollution. That is also true, common sense points again. There is no known safe level of exposure to mercury. If you see in general, yes, in general, we cannot identify one single source, that one single uh, number through which you can actually bypass mercury exposure. Any kind of exposure will create some kind of impact. So, generally, you know, three some, sometimes can be seen as we can be remove three here option and choose only two as correct. But I have taken in general, yes, there is no defined exposure limit for mercury. So, 1, 2, 3 are correct. As you can see, so many answers are all correct in environment. Okay. And next question, green hydrogen very much in news again and again because it is a very clean source of energy and it is usually produced from renewable energy sources. Fine. And it leaves only water vapor as its uh, end product and not much pollutants come outside green hydrogen. That is why we are using it a lot these days. It can be used directly as fuel 
for internal combustion. Yes, green hydrogen comes by electrolysis, breaking down of the water into hydrogen and oxygen. Of course, it is used as fuel for the internal combustion engines. It can be blended with natural gas and used as fuel for heat or for power generation. Yes, we can do blending of green hydrogen with natural gas. It is helpful. So, rest pollution will come out of that and same amount of heat or energy is generated if you use green hydrogen. Option 2 also is right. We are going towards all correct again. It can be used in the hydrogen fuel cells to run vehicles. Yeah, fuel cells will be converting the chemical energy into electrical energy. So, obviously, yes, green hydrogen can be used in the fuel cells to run the vehicles. That is what we are doing these days in India also. Fine. So, but the manufacture is expensive. That is one constraint here. So, 1, 2, 3, again, all are correct here. Fine. So, common sense questions again. I think I told common sense words so many times. You must have got fed up hearing that. Sorry about that. This is somewhat geography environment question. Tropical rainforests always have rainfall throughout the year daily. When daily rainfall is happening, the soil floor, top floor is always leaching away. It is not rich in nutrients. Not rich in nutrients. Wrong. High temperature and moisture. Yes, it is warm. Causes dead organic matter to decompose. Yes, in warm conditions, very ideal conditions for the decomposers to decompose the leaf litter and the other organisms. So, our statement 2 is right here. 1 is wrong. So, what is the right answer? 1 is incorrect and 2 is correct. So, very easy answer. Very easy question. Answer D is the right option here. And uh, next question. Wolbachia method is used in reference to, sometimes in news you have to keep track of what is uh, uh, being uh, uh, discussed in the new technologies, how to reduce diseases, how to reduce pollution, fine. So, Wolbachia is a method in which what you are doing, you are controlling the viral diseases spread by mosquitoes. Mosquitoes in general do not cause problems, but because they carry the, they are the hosts of various, uh, you know, diseases. They carry lots of viruses, protozoa and what not. Example, Aedes aegypti. So, what happens is, in general, many insects usually have this bacteria, okay. They are very common bacteria, Volbachia. They are naturally there in many insects. Sometimes, they are there in the Aedes aegypti mosquito also. That mosquito causes various diseases like chikungunya, dengue, okay, zika, chikungunya and what not. So, when what happens here is, how to stop these viruses increasing, proliferating in the body or stomach of the mosquito? What we have to do then? Let us do something. Mosquitoes carry viruses. So, what we will do is, we will treat this Aedes aegypti mosquitoes by adding the vol Volbachia, that means the bacteria we are going to add. Now, imagine in the mosquitoes body, viruses are there, bacteria are there. We are introducing the bacteria means, now bacteria and viruses will compete inside the mosquito. That means the chances for the virus to replicate in the body of mosquitoes will decline. Fine. So, as a result, we are going to reduce the chances of that diseases proliferating. Very simple explanation is there, okay. So, that means less likely to spread viruses from person to person because when you introduce this bacteria, Volbachia, the other viruses will find it difficult to reproduce inside the mosquitoes. Very interesting technique, right? Okay. Next explanation here. Biodiversity management committees in local bodies, we make this. We have an act, National Biodiversity Act 2002. As per the act, we also created what at the local bodies level, BMCs, Biodiversity Management Committees. They will prepare the biodiversity register with the help of the local population. What all? Example like you are having some small village. At the local level, they will be making the Biodiversity Management Committee. What their task is? To prepare the biodiversity register. That means what all biodiversity exists in that particular local locality. And they have to make sure that it is used sustainably. There is al already a protocol. Nagoya protocol is there, 2010 protocol signed in Japan, which talks about genetic resources access. Many countries in the world, India, Africa, they have some traditional, you know, lot of resources, genetic resources are there. We need to save and conserve them. There are so many indigenous communities who are actually sustaining on those resources. Now, if I am exploiting the resources and making some medicine, I should share the profits or the proceeds of my business with the local communities. That means there should be fair use of or share of genetic resources, uh, uh, whatever you are earning from that. The fair use of genetic resources, Nagoya protocol is important here to understand. So, first one is, yeah, when you actually brought this BMC or the Biodiversity Act, 
you are actually accepting the Nagoya protocol. So option one is correct here. Objective is fine. Biodiversity management committees are important because they give access and benefit sharing power to levy collection of fees on the access of biological resources within its jurisdiction. Both are right options because they will be preparing the biodiversity registers. Fine. So they have to make sure that whatever resources are being used in their local areas, they should be properly compensated for that. Fair use should be there. They can be levying some taxes also on the people who are using the resources. Very interesting point here. Okay. So both are correct here. And next option, last question, I believe 99th, yes. Heavy industries, geography question, fertilizer plants, oil refineries, steel plants, they all use different sources of energy. Green hydrogen is expected to play an important role in decarbonizing how many of the above industries? Yeah, green hydrogen is seen as a very important replacement renewable fuel. So what we are going to do now, we can use green hydrogen as an alternative to the other energy intensive, carbon intensive fuels, what are there, we can reduce the, you know, dependence on that. We can use green hydrogen instead in all the industries, fertilizers, refineries, steel plants and everywhere you can use it. So that means even though see here, today it is only 0.1% of the world hydrogen production, but it is highly promising. We want to make it more and more easily accessible so as to replace the traditional fuels, traditional carbon intensive fuels what we are using and we should replace in these industries green hydrogen, fine. So as expected, green hydrogen, I was expecting this year, they'll be asking two questions came from this area. So overall, if I ask, if you say uh, environment ecology was little bit on expected lines and they have asked the traditional topics and the current uh, area also. Animals and birds, it is not a surprise. Usually we can expect questions on that every year. You know, Indian Forest Service exam is linked with the uh, civil services exam. So that means you can always find environment questions. That means geography environment, if you add roughly around 35 questions have come bulk area. So please do prepare properly and hope the explanation has helped you except one or two questions remaining keys I am quite sure about. Thank you.